you know, we're learning ways to perturb the brain, and I'm just wondering, do you think someday that people will be sort of enhancing kind of quote-unquote natural creativity to get people to be more like what we think of as geniuses, or is that just not possible? I love the idea of the vision that there's a way to, to, um, to bring out the genius in all of us. And I wish that there was a way that in our educational system that we could develop ways to promote creativity. We, we do actually, we're pretty good at it, but we could be better. That um, we could teach people to take risks in education. We could value more the, um, the, the person that takes the path that is not the common path. Mm. I think we, as a society, are pretty good at that. Mm -hmm. But we could be a lot better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's one of the values of studying or thinking about genius. It's a way for us to think about, gee, Let's, let's get better at this creative business. Let's, let's find that creative spirit in all of us. Right. Let's move forward faster. I think sometimes people think about the brain as kind of a shortcut to all, all these sorts of problems. You know, if we just understand the brain, then we can just go right in there and just fix things directly. Whereas it's, it is easy to forget that, you know, education itself is, alters the brain. Exactly. I think that we have to think about brains in the context of our society. Um, one of the things about genius, I think, is not just an individual or just a brain. It's about opportunity. It's about somebody who is given the pathway to actually make a contribution. Think of our, our musicians that most of us would consider geniuses, Bach, Beethoven, Mozart. These are people that um, were put in positions that uh, allowed them to be creative. The creative spirit comes with many things other than just a brain, I think. It comes with opportunity, it comes with resources, mm -hmm. it comes with mm -hmm. attitude. Again, I like the idea of not thinking of it as something that, that targets an individual and separates them, mm -hmm. but something that joins us together as a quality that belongs to all of us. Mm. Mm. Well, because it is true that when we, people talk about geniuses, they are other. They're, they're, they're almost freakish. Exactly. And I think that that attitude really deters people from taking the risk. I mean, it's a double-edged sword. The genius term is often associated with the person that really changes the way we think. It contributes something that didn't exist before, mm -hmm. that changes the course of our progress in some fundamental way. Mm -hmm. So that person, by his or her nature, stands out and is different. And mm -hmm. yet, and yet, all of us are different in our creative sphere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that by incorporating the creative person into the mainstream, um, it might be a way to encourage more creativity. Mm. In a way, uh, you know, you, you've been talking a, a lot about the things that neuroscientists can't tell us about genius. We want easy answers, and, and we think, oh, the easy answers are on the brain. And, and you're kind of warning us, like, well, we neuroscientists, we, we don't know all that much. The brain's a complicated thing, and it's, in, it, it, it's a social thing, too. So, I mean, what do you think that neuroscientists uh, can do to help us understand genius better? I mean, what... What are the kinds of studies that you think would be like the, the best ones to do to make us understand genius as, as you think of it? I think that in general, the study of individual differences um, is a really interesting direction to take. Differences in, say, there's some people that have extraordinary memory. Mm -hmm. and. We can design experiments to look at the neural circuitry that's associated with memory strategies. Mm -hmm. And we learn something about what makes one person better at memorizing things than another. There are differences in um, how, how well we do mathematics and how well we can um, put things together. Mm -hmm. And understanding the rules for those differences is important. For example, one of the things that um, 
neuroscientists have taught us recently is that the parts of the brain are all so richly interconnected and the extent to which they are connected has a great deal to do with function. So we're talking about, say, a patch of your cortex over here and another patch over here, and there are like cables joining them together? Indeed. And how well those connections actually work um, is thought to um, contribute a great deal to our individual differences. Mm -hmm. Is it that some people have more connections than others or bigger connections? Or what's, what, are, what are those underlying differences? Well, it's all of the above. Mm. In some cases, the connections are actually more richly intermittent. There are more simply more of them. Mm -hmm. In other cases, they go to slightly different places. Mm. Um, in other cases, they're just stronger connections, which mm -hmm. means there's less noise in the brain. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of those hypotheses are, are viable options. Mm -hmm. There's evidence for all of them, mm -hmm. and they contribute to um, considerable differences between performances in one person or, and, and, and another. So uh, if, we, if we start to get down to these, you know, real kind of biological components of, you know, creativity, of innovation, and of, you know, ultimately what we might call genius. I'm wondering, how, can we start to kind of figure out, like, are geniuses just born, or are they made? Or what, can we figure, can we figure out, like, what the, the differences are? You know, was, was Einstein just a blank slate when he was born, and he just happened to have a really good math teacher in first grade? I mean, what, you know, how, how do those connections what do we know about how those connections develop uh, in, in children, in teenagers, as in adults, and you know, how the genes play a role in all that? That really is the $64,000 mm -hmm. question. And it is the question that we would like to answer. Mm -hmm. uh, how does the brain do it, and how do we help the brain do it better? I think that your question really um, raises another really important point, and that is how much bigger our questions are than our science, our methodology. We need a genius to figure this one out <laughs> because we need to be able to answer those kinds of questions faster, mm -hmm. we need to answer them better, and we need to apply them to um, our lives.